First of May already, but it is. So good morning and happy first of May. Um, we're doing everything I write in April. I read 15 books, which is a pretty standard month for me. Anything between 10 and 15 is standard. Anything over 15 is excessive for me. That means I was really reading. Um, and anything less than 10, something was going on because I do not ever read less than 10 books in a month. So let me drop the chart here and then we're going to talk about all 15 books that I read this month. And we are back. So I read a lot of romance this month and then the next step would be fantasy I think I did at least one thriller and then some gothic fiction. So pretty hefty mix there other than it's normally way fantasy heavier than romance heavier. But you know this year 2024 just seems to be my romance year. I have really struggled to get into some fantasy. Not everything. Now there's been some fantasy like the ones in this month that have been chef's kiss and so, so good. And I had no problem focusing on, but I don't know why, but some fantasy novels that I bought last year and put on my shelf and highly expected to love, we are not it this year. So not really sure what's going on with that, but we're just trucking along. First book that I read this month though is called Ink. It is on Kindle Unlimited. It is by Elizabeth Hunter. And it is this adorable story where a girl moves back to her small town hometown to run her grandma's bookshop. Uh, she needs to kind of improve it with the time. So she lets a tattoo artist who she becomes friends with open up a tattoo shop portion of the shop. And they call it Ink. And you can get your books or your tattoos. And it is just a cute little rom-com. It is book one in a series. I don't know if I'm going to read the rest of the series. But Ink specifically had me kicking my feet and giggling. And it was super cute. And I, I enjoyed it. It was a great, like, what do you want to call it? Um, Distraction. So, yeah, I really enjoyed Ink. Next up, we have a two-star. Oh, I gave Ink five stars. Um... Dowry of Blood. I just don't think I am a gothic fiction girly. I used to be. Like, I used to be that girl. But it just drags for me anymore. I don't know what the problem is. I did not get the hype with Diary of, or Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson. I missed the hype train. I don't know if I need to do a reread to get it. I don't know. It was fun. Cute. Like, not cute. Cute is not the right word for that book. Um, it was interesting. It, 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 I finished it. Um, that's the best I've got for that book. I don't know why. It just didn't grab me the way that it did some people. Two stars for me on that one. Next up, we have another five star in <laughs> Pucking Wild by Emily Rath. The fact that I gave Dowry of Blood two stars and Pucking Wild five stars is going to trigger some people. But it's preference. That's the great thing about books. It's your preference. It's what you like. I thought that Pucking Wild was awesome. I blew through that book in like a day and a half and it's a pretty thick boy. Um, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. It is the follow-up to, uh, Pucking Around, which is the first book in the Jacksonville Ray series. I'm so excited for the third book because I am a Novi girl, and I really hope that, um, we find out what's going on with that little thruple over there, um, in Pucking Sweet, I think it's called, and I think it's coming out at the end of the year. So really excited about that. 
Next up was a five star plus read for me and it was a surpriser. I picked it up off the Sam's Club shelf because it had um, ice skates and a hockey puck on it. And I was in my hockey era and I was like, <clears throat> unsteady by Peyton Corinne. It sounded angsty. It sounded um, just, I don't know, it sounded good. So it was a thin little paperback and I was like, I'm going to pick this book up. And holy crap, did that book make me cry? It is about found family. It is about <clears throat> a million different things. Um, overcoming anxiety. So essentially, your main female character in that book um, is taking care of her brothers because her dad is a deadbeat alcoholic and uh, mom took off. And she's trying to juggle it all at a very young age and go to college. And she gets catches the interest of this hockey player who took a really nasty hit and got really injured. And now he has terrible PTSD from it and can't skate. So they meet each other and romance ensues after some dealing with their issues. And yeah, I just really enjoyed that book. Um, very angsty, but also fluffy in places. So Gotta Love Unsteady by Peyton Corinne. It was a five star plus for me. Up next, we have Forget Me Not by Julie Soto. Sorry, you're kind of angled in front of my spreadsheet. So, um, Forget Me Not by Julie Soto. I got it four stars. I really liked this book. This was Kindle Unlimited. It was another one that I had had on my KU for a while. I was just trying to read through it so that I could return some of them so that I could get some new ones. And, um, yeah, I just was like, well, let me read this so I can return it. It doesn't look that long. It's been on my Kindle one of the longest. So let me read it. It was super cute. It is about a, a male um, wedding. Well, he's a florist, but he primarily, I think, does weddings and events. And um, a female wedding planner. And they dated like two years ago and things were just shit. They went bad quickly. Neither of them was ready for this particular relationship. Probably the guy was. The guy seems to stand up the whole book, but um, the girl was flighty and not ready for this relationship. And jump two years, I think it is. It's like two, three years, something like that. And they have to work together on a wedding again, a big wedding, a famous wedding. And yeah, being in the same proximity stir some things up so it's called forget me not it's by julie soto it got four stars from me we got another five star plus up next in powerless by ms lauren roberts i loved this freaking book it was probably one of my favorite books of april it is fantasy it is about um a lot of things but basically a caste system in the world where you have your elites who have powers your mundane who have like just kind of blood powers powers that aren't that helpful and your ordinaries who have absolutely no powers and the king has decided that he wants all of the ordinaries dead and um yeah you have an ordinary girl who is pretending to have powers pretending to be like a psychic to stay alive and you have the second son of the king and there's a trial there's hunger game style fighting there's romance but there is no smut in this book we are crossing our toes for book number two um but just yesterday a book called powerful came out it is a novella that tells the side story of one of the characters in this book and I am going to be reading that in May. And I'm very, very excited about it because I love these characters so, so much. It was a five star plus for me. If you've not read Powerful yet, or sorry, Powerless yet, what the hell are you doing? If you're a fantasy girly, go read that book. I did the Audible because I had heard really good things about it. It was dual, dual voiced, one guy voice, one girl voice. It was phenomenal. So freaking good. Stopped that book at the end and was like, fuck, when's the next one coming out? So yeah, Powerful was, or Powerless, gosh, why do I keep saying Powerful? Powerful is the novella that just came out yesterday. Probably because it's on my mind. But Powerless was amazing. Definitely read Powerless. Wild Love by Elsie Silver, new, another new release. That one got a five for me, right? Yeah, it got a five for me. 
I liked it a lot, like a lot, enough to give it five stars. Um, the last half of the book. The first half of the book, I'm not going to lie to you, was a little bit slow, just because we had to get a whole new cast of characters introduced. If you know me, you know I love, and I mean love, Elsie Silver's Chestnut Springs series. Like, ate it up. I actually did a reread this month of the first book in that series, and I plan to reread the whole Chestnut Springs series. But right now, I've just got too much else to read. I was just rereading it in bed at night because the book that I was reading was a physical book. So it was sitting on my desk and I didn't want to turn the light on in the bedroom. I digress. It was just what I was skimming through on my Kindle. But Wild Love was really, really good in the back half of the book. And it set up this new city and new characters really, really well. I am very excited for the second book in that series. Um, it will be a famous country star and kind of a rancher. Um, just even the snippet, like the first chapter that we got at the end of Wild Love for the next book was so good. I'm very excited about that book. This is all single dad romances, I believe, in this city for Elsie Silver. Um, and yeah, it's going to be real good. So I'm excited about that. Five stars for Wild Love. The Good Girl Complex. Um, so Al Kennedy, I went ahead and read the first two books in Probably the only series of hers I haven't read because I definitely have binged through all of L. Kennedy's body of work this year. But I read The Good Girl Complex and The Bad Girl Reputation. Both got four stars for me. They are very different than the hockey romances. These are very much like, um, what show did people compare them to? Oh, that beach show. Outer Banks. These have a very strong Outer Banks vibe. They are beachy, um, bad boy, good girl for the most part, except for bad girl reputation. That's bad boy, bad girl. But the first book is very bad boy, good girl. They were super fun. They were funny as hell. I laughed so much reading these. Um, and yeah, I really, really enjoyed them. The next up is um, the book Bought by Willa Winters. It is the first book in the highest bidder. I just wanted to see what it was about. Um, I knew that they were like auction. That's all I'm going to say about that. If you need more, Google. Um, and I wanted to see what they were about. And I gave the first book bought three stars, which is pretty high for me for a majority smut book. Like, light on the, um, actual drama or the storyline. There we go. Light on storyline, heavy on smut is usually not my favorite thing in the world. I need a much better balance than that. But I did give that one three stars because I thought that the storyline was at least kind of there. Uh, check your trigger warnings on that one. Absolutely. Before you just go into the highest bidder series. Sorry about that. My alarm was going off. Um, next up is a new release I was very, very, very freaking excited about. And that is the Beloved by J.R. Ward. We got Nate and Nala's story. Holy crap, was I in the Black Dagger Brotherhood with that one. I actually had a reading slump after that one because I didn't want to leave the Black Dagger Brotherhood world. Um, I really am excited for L.W. and Biddy's book, which I hope is the next book that we get from J.R. Ward. But holy crap, this book was good. I will be rereading this book whenever I am and having a low that book will bring me back up because I love Nate and Nala so freaking much. I love the Black Dagger Brotherhood world. They are all so good. I love the Black Dagger legacy books um, with the trainees. Yeah, I freaking love, 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 love this world that J.R. Ward has created. And I am due for a reread on some of those. So Five Star Plus, that book is amazing. If you are a Black Dagger Brotherhood fan, you will not be disappointed. Up next, we have A Vow of Thieves by Mary E. Pearson. I loved this series. It's a duology. Um, it is called Dance of Thieves I read last month and Vow of Thieves this month. I only gave Vow of Thieves four stars. And I do wonder if the reason I only gave it four stars is because I read it right after The Beloved. Um, which I fucking loved. So it's a really good 
fantasy romance type series. There's not a lot of romance. I would actually almost call it more fantasy than fantasy romance. It's very political. There's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of fighting, that kind of thing. But um, I loved Violet Thieves. I thought it was really, really good. Up next, we have Flawless is Reread by Elsie Silver. That is the first in the Chestnut Springs books. I told you I did a reread on that one this month. You can find a whole video on how much I love Chestnut Springs on this channel. Multiple videos, probably. We got another new release. I read a lot of brand new releases this month, um, like four of them, which is crazy. Funny Story by Emily Henry. Also got a five star plus from Lauren. I freaking loved this book. Holy crap, was this one good. I felt so connected to the characters in it. I could not put it down. Loved this story. Absolutely loved it. We followed up those back to back five star plus reads with A Tempest of Tea by Hafsa Fazal, I think is how you say the name. So, in my last video, that one just wasn't for me. I am starting to find it more and more difficult to read stuff that doesn't have romance in it. I know that may turn some of you off. Um, you know, I'm not going to say that because I still love Brandon Sanderson's work and that does not have a lot of romance in it. At least not like the Stormlight Saga. And I love that. So I don't know what it is lately, but A Tempest of Tea got a two star for me. Same as Dowry of Blood. Both of those fell flat for me. I don't know if you watched my video about DNFs uh, that I posted on Saturday. No, Monday. Um, I don't know if my expectations were too high for these and then they fell flat. I do that sometimes with books that I hear about all the time or that are talked heavily about on my TikTok. I'm like, oh, freak, this looks like a really good book. And then I got to wait a couple months for it at the library and the hype kind of goes down. And then when it finally drops, I'm like, ooh. There's six other books I want to read, but I've got to read this because I've heard it's really good, heard it's really good, and I try to read it, and it's not really good to me, and then it gets a really low rating. So, I'm not saying A Tempest of Tea is bad. I'm saying, for me, it wasn't what I was looking for at the moment. So, I got a two-star, and I DNF'd it. Um, but I'll tell you something that I didn't DNF was freaking the last book that I read this month of April. I cannot wait for Saturday's video. I have started The Boys of Tommen by Chloe Walsh. Binding 13? I don't want to go into too much detail because I'm going to do a video on Saturday. But holy freaking frick, 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 frick. Binding 13 by Chloe Walsh is so good. It's insane. It's literally insane how much I love this book. It is 600 pages, the first book. I read it in a little less than two days. Um, The amount I cannot put the series down. We're going to talk about it on the next video. Okay, I'm not divulging too much. It is a rugby, angsty, YA romance we're gonna we're gonna talk about it on um, Saturday's video. Just know it's really freaking good and it got a five star plus from me. So yeah, that's everything that I read in April. Fifteen books, yo. I had a pretty good April for reading. I am definitely happy with it. I love you guys so much. Please stay tuned on Saturday because I'm going to have a very probably lengthy um, Boys of Tommen video. I have not read Joey stuff yet. But when I tell you that Jonathan Kavanaugh is real high up there on my book boyfriend list, I'm not lying. Um, find out why on Saturday morning. All right. I love you guys. And I'll see you then. Bye.